A comfortable boot is always a pleasure to find. Uh, a comfortable boot that's handcrafted at a fair price, even better. G'day, welcome back to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and waters that I work on, the Wajit people. This is the Nomad uh, Mock Toe Boot by relatively new brand, Devier. Uh, in fact, this is their Generation 2 Nomad Boot, and this makeup is in cognac suede on a black wedge sole. But you can get, I think, uh, a couple more uppers leathers and also choose between uh, these black or white wedge soles. I believe you can also uh, customize and add on a commando lugged sole. Now, I'll talk through the full Generation 2 specs when I get to construction. And before I start, just know that I was given this pair for review, but without any obligation to say anything about it, except for what I truly feel about it. Jake from Almost Vintage Style Channel says, with some truth, that if you're given a pair of boots, you actually feel so grateful that there's bound to be some sort of subconscious bias. But I think all of us boot reviewers realize this, and sometimes maybe we even go overboard to find some sort of fault. <laughs> anyway, here's my honest review. Take it as it is. You can see my unboxing and immediate reaction in this video uh, up here. Uh, this is aesthetically a six inch mock toe boot. Not all mock toe boots are work boots, and this is not. It's really more of a casual boot and not rugged enough, in my opinion, not, not really um, made of enough uh, tough leathers uh, to take it on a work, work site. It is six inches high at the shaft. It has an open derby lacing system, uh, has the apron stitch vamp incorporating the uh, moccasin style mock toe. The sidewalls have an interesting uh, piece running the length of the boot. Very difficult to make a mock toe boot these days without it being compared to an old standard like the Red Wing 875 or the Thoroughgood. Um, so having the, the interesting piece at the side is different. The last also makes it different because it has a, a more almond shaped toe than the usual suspects. Although there is a good amount of height volume in the toe box if you're worried about being cramped. The wedge sole is also different and I'll talk more about it when I get to the construction. Now, I'm not going to spend too long talking about what to wear with these. Uh, it's obviously a casual boot, so you can wear it with whatever you consider to be casual. I have actually stretched it a bit even by wearing it to the office, but I chose to tone all the dressiness down from a denim, uh, just with a denim shirt and a vest, just to kind of dress it down. Frankly, that's as dressed up as I think it would go. Let me talk a bit about the brand Dievier though. It is pretty new, so not many of you may have heard about it. Devier uh, was founded by Gustavo and Daniel only a few years ago, around, uh, I think it was 2022. Um, they started their journey a few years before then, though, when they were in their mid-twenties. That's very young. <laughs> they got interested in heritage boots and then got into how they were made and then talked about how they could combine the rugged durability of North American boots with the comfort and quality of European standards they decided to start their own brand that incorporated the model of uh, making good quality boots as a small batch handmade bootmaker. They set a goal to combine aesthetics with craftsmanship in their boots. They covered a lot of research and development initially and then found a cobbler who helped them secure contracts so that they could start manufacturing. These boots are made in small batches in Guanajuato State in central Mexico uh, by their experienced bootmaker and a team of craftspeople. Now on their website, they do write a lot about producing a combination of durable footwear with upscale and premium footwear. But I have to be honest, as nicely made as these are, they're not there yet. These I think will prove durable and they are fine as good casual boots. But I don't think you can describe them as uh, higher end European finished boots. But their journey has just started. As they gain sales and they save capital to invest, let's see where they go. So let's dive into their construction. Starting from the bottom, they are put onto a proprietary black wedge sole. I guess if you wanted to compare it with something you know, you'd say that uh, this was a cross between a Vibram Gloxy cut wedge sole uh, and the Vibram Christie sole. 
The rubber compound is actually really soft, so it's really comfortable to stand and walk on with plenty of shock absorption. The tread cut into the bottom is a combination of uh, a wavy heel and toe portion, uh, thin ridges, and thicker ridges at the ball of the foot. Now this really does give it good grip and the change from the thin ridges to the thicker wavy ridges allows for fantastic braking because the ball of the foot uh, flexes really easy like I, how I imagine a Gloxy cut would do. Now the compound is also said to be oil resistant, so great if you're wearing this in a, say, a mechanic workshop, I guess. The sole is connected to the uppers using the Goodyear welt form of construction. See my video about the four main types of construction up there for a detailed description. But for now the basics. A veg tanned welt is sewn onto the veg tanned leather insole and the turned in uppers on the inside. Note that in the generation 2 they use a veg tanned insole whereas in the generation 1 they previously used fiberboard. On the outside edge of the welt it's stitched through the veg tanned midsole. And then the rubber outsole is glued to the midsole very similarly to how Red Wing does it except that Red Wing uses a rubber mid slip sole. It's said that rubber on rubber provides a better adhesive grip but these you know they, they actually feel strong enough. Now this is a 360 degree welt meaning it goes all the way around the boot. If you look at the profile the rubber at the ball is about 15 millimeters thick then the midsole is itself about 5 mm thick, then the welt is 3 or 4 mm thick. In the generation 2, they use a veg tan leather insole or lasting board, whereas the Gen 1 had a fiber insole as well. Uh, as that 3 or 4 mm thick welt goes around the edge of the boot, it causes a cavity, and I assume that's cork filled, although I, I don't know for sure. Poking around inside though, there is a feeling of give like cork. Now, I don't know if there is a shank. Many mock toe bootmakers using wedge soles don't put in a shank because the wedge sole doesn't have that usual gap between a heel block and the ball of the feet, so perhaps it's not needed. You know, I can never feel the difference, but some people say they can. Staying inside the boot, there's a removable polyurethane or PU insole uh, with a leather top. The inside of the boot is fully leather lined, a bit of luxury for a work boot style mock toe. The tongue is lined and feels like it's lightly padded at the instep and it is semi-gusseted up to the fourth eyelet. The previous Gen 1 tongue was not gusseted. Uh, the tongue also has a lace loop in it for extra security of, of not slipping around. The hardware is seven hexagonal eyelets, no speed hooks, and is painted. Now I'm not sure if these are steel eyelets uh, or an alloy or even a hard plastic. It is, uh, the metal or plastic is so smooth that it's hard to tell. They are, however, really well installed uh, with a strong backing. The last is your Nomad Gen 2 Last. Now the last is that foot-shaped mold around which they build the boot. The Gen 2 Last has, a, has more volume so that it can accommodate the insoles, which are a new feature uh, from the Gen 1. The shoelaces uh, are worth a mention. In the Gen 2, they give you uh, longer laces that can be wrapped around your ankles for a more secure lacing up. Now, some people don't like this, I know, so you can just swap out for shorter laces if you want. The uppers are in a suede, which I'm, I'm pretty sure is from a Mexican tannery. Look, it's not going to compete with Charles F. Stead suede, but it does feel soft and supple. Uh, it's not hugely thick though. The suede and lining together is only about three mils thick. So as a work boot, probably not hugely protective, but you can always choose one of the full grain leathers. As I said at the introduction, I, I think the design is different. The mock toe is stated to be a true mock toe, meaning that there are two pieces of leather at the vamp. You have the side walls and then the top, which are stitched together with the mock toe stitch. Uh, at the quarter, the bottom is one piece of leather that goes the whole length, and that stitched to the upper quarter and I think it's done so quite attractively. It's a good design. There is a single piece back stay at the back. Now I don't know what the toe stiffener or the internal heel counter is, but from the feel of the give I'm thinking it's probably a thermoplastic or possibly a fiber board. The QC is not bad, it's quite good apart from uh, uh, maybe one or two stitches here that might be uh, fluffy. <laughs> All the other stitches though they're straight and clean. The edges of the welt and the leather midsole though 
Uh, they don't seem very waxed. It looks like the raw edge of leather there. I think I'd probably be concerned about moisture getting in there and maybe expanding the fibers. So I did wax them when I first got these. As for sizing, these are true to Brannock size. I am an eight and a half in D width on the Brannock device. And these are that size and fit me perfectly. If you don't know your Brannock size, I highly recommend you get measured at a shoe store. But generally, generally, <laughs> you'd be about a half size down from a sneaker, uh, the same size in a dress shoe, and about a half size up from heritage boots like Iron Rangers. As for comfort, these are incredibly comfortable. They're quite light. Uh, there was no breaking to speak of. The uppers are soft and, and pretty supple, so didn't need any breaking in. The sole itself is soft and shock absorbing and, and even flexed very quickly at the ball of the feet. So it avoided any uh, or, in, or much of a new boot heel slip for me. The padded removable insole makes it easy to stand in these all day. Despite the almond shaped toe, the volume gives you a lot of room in the toe box. So your, your toes just don't feel squished. Now to value, especially if you uh, see that maybe the QC is not 100%. These are listed at US $276, 76 more than Thursdays, uh, which is a good entry level brand, uh, 20 or $25 more than a Thoroughgood mock toe and $34 or so less than the Red Wing mock toe. To be honest, I think all those names apart from Thursday are objectively better made and have better sourced materials than these. And the Thursday diplomats, their mock toe, are probably aesthetically prettier. However, I think you need to consider that these are handcrafted from a small batch ma uh, maker, not in a factory. Uh, and the, the maker can accommodate small changes for you on request. And these have a quite different aesthetic. I think in time as Dievia improves and if the price stays the same or similar, they may not have the history of those heritage brands, but they will be up there. Keep watching out for them. A young and innovative company that's seeking to improve is worth watching. So there you go. I think this is an interesting new brand. They have set themselves an ambitious but very clear goal. I just don't think they're there yet, but all the signs are there. And as they improve, they're going to get better. They have innovative design thinking. They have uh, saved some uh, profits and developed a Gen 2 boot. So they keep improving. As they grow, it will be interesting what their journey looks like. Personally, I, I think if you want an incredibly comfortable, casual mock toe, the Nomad is definitely worth a look. It is not a work boot, let me make that clear. It will not go places where manual workers take their red wing. Uh, but on casual occasions, at relaxed workplaces, maybe even at light workplaces like carpentry shops and warehouses, I think they'll be fine. Anyway, make sure you click on like and subscribe as I bring you more boots. Don't miss them. Until the next time, take care and see you soon.